Hi, this is Fish and welcome to Fish Picks. Have you ever had one of those days or weeks or months when you feel like you've lost your mojo? Not only are you not progressing, but locks that you opened easily in the past suddenly seem impossible. Today we'll be looking at the phenomenon of the lock sports slump and how to get out of it again. Day after day, day after day, we stuck nor breath nor motion, as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean. That's a stanza from one of my favourite poems, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, by S.T. Coleridge. The narrator's describing the interminable experience of being stuck at sea in an infamous zone near the equator with very little wind, which causes sailing ships like his to sit stranded and helpless for long periods. That experience of stasis can be so depressing and spirit-sapping that the name of that area became synonymous with a feeling of a lack of energy or progression, and we still use it today. We talk about being stuck in the doldrums. But you don't have to be at sea to have that experience. Most lock sport enthusiasts will tell you that there are certain times when, without warning or explanation, they'll suddenly lose their touch, and the harder they try to get back on track, the worse things become. They are adrift and it makes no sense. They don't feel that they're doing anything different. They're using the same tools, the same techniques, perhaps even picking the same locks, but they've suddenly had their access all areas pass revoked. The first time this happens, it can be really off-putting. You may have been picking for a few weeks, riding high on the initial winds and making the kind of fast progress that tends to come with any new hobby and then suddenly, it all fizzles out. Some newcomers even lose heart and decide that lock sport's clearly not for them. They put their kit on eBay and walk away without realising that we've all gone through similar phases. The good news is that this is a well-recognised phenomenon and it's temporary. In fact, it usually precedes a leap in skill and development. Anders Ericsson, the researcher responsible for the famed 10,000 hour rule, which posits that it takes on average 10,000 hours of deliberate practice to master a complex skill, writes in his book Peak that when you first start learning something new, it's normal to see rapid or at least steady improvement. And when that improvement stops, it's natural to believe you've hit some sort of implacable limit. While the 10,000 hour rule has since been found to be somewhat simplistic, it is useful to reflect on the idea that skills progression isn't linear, but punctuated by a series of growth spurts and plateaus, where we consolidate what we've learned before being ready to make the next leap forwards. At times, this will also involve periods when we feel as if we're stalled or even regressing, but this too is part of the learning journey. There's always a balance to be had between challenging ourselves to progress and not going so hard at it that we stop enjoying ourselves along the way. So if you do find yourself in the doldrums, here are five strategies that you could try. First, pay attention to your mindset and notice if and when you slip from feeling creatively challenged to becoming simply frustrated and disengaged. Take a break before those less useful feelings start to dominate. As soon as you're fighting your own frustrations as well as the lock, you're outnumbered, so save your energy. Number two, having stepped away, switch gears by doing something completely unrelated. Walk the dog, make some origami, do a crossword. This will allow you to emotionally and psychologically reset. Three, you could also reach out for some help from others in the community. It's a good idea to be reminded that you're not alone. We've all been there and this too will pass. Four, only come back to the problem you're working on when you feel excited to have another go, whether that's five minutes later or the next day. And five, when you do come back to picking, Intentionally mix things up. Bring a playful and experimental approach to your next session. Try picking anti-clockwise. Turn the pins the other way up. Use something other than your go-to pick. 
This approach will keep the stakes low and bring some curiosity back to the experience. Start with locks that are typically easier than your current project and get some early wins back under your belt before facing off with something that's at the edge of your ability again. Finally, I find it helps to remember that the pride and satisfaction I feel when I do get an open can't be separated from the frustration I experience when I fail. It's because lockpicking is difficult that it's worth struggling with. After all, you could always use a key if you wanted guaranteed success, but where would be the fun in that? The Stoic philosophers had a phrase, amor fati, which means we should strive to love our fate, however difficult it might seem at times. If we commit to embrace it all, whatever the picking session might bring, then it can help to reframe those failures as feedback instead. So, if you find yourself in the doldrums, enjoy a little rest, do some ship repairs and have a little faith, then hoist the sails and wait for the wind to come again. Thanks for listening. Hit the like button if you think I've earned it. And until next time, take good care.